We are together again, just praising the Lord. We are together again, in one accord. Something good is going to happen. Something good is in store. We are together again, just praising the Lord. We are together again, we are together again, just praising the Lord, just praising the Lord. We are together again, in one accord, yes. Something good is going to happen, something good is in store. We are together again. Just praising the Lord. Welcome to you, welcome. Good to be with you again. A weekend has passed. Today is Monday. I'm so confused now by the days. Today is Monday, right? Yes, it's Monday the 23rd of May. And look at that. The last time I saw you like this was last week, Monday. So it's really good to say we are together again just praising the lord we are together again with one accord something good is going to happen something good is in store we are together again just praising the Lord. Carol Hamilton, we are together again. Kareen Bynum, how are you doing? Sharon Henry, Carol Hamilton, Dion Richards, Petulia Rickman, Keisha Turnbull, look at you. You're all over Wafif. You're at Wafif, Fort Lauderdale. You're at Wafif, Jamaica. It is really good. Good, good to be with you once again. We bless the Holy Spirit. We thank God for letting us live to see another day. This is the day the Lord has made and we are rejoicing right now and we're being glad in it and we just bless the Holy Spirit now. We thank God for his presence with us. We thank God for allowing us to live to see this day. As I usually say, <laughs> there are persons who went to bed last night, didn't get up to see uh, a new morning there are persons who were alive up to a minute ago and at this minute they're not here so listen we don't take things for granted we do not we're not complacent with our praises we're not facetious and take it for granted that uh yeah it's it's what what, what do you expect he created us so so we are just happy we're just being humble right now and we're just saying thank you god for one more day this day we couldn't be here without you we are not going to take it upon ourselves and say we just came here by chance no big bang nothing like that no other view but the biblical view that is the view on which we stand that is the belief we have that we were created by God, the creator of the universe, and it is in the same God in whom we move and live and have our being, and we're going to stand on that. And when anyone else comes to tell us otherwise, no humanist, no deist, none of them, nobody is going to come and tell us otherwise because we know who it is who has caused us to be here. We know in whom we believe. We know in whom we move. We know that we've seen the miracles. No man could do that. God working through man. We have seen it and therefore we believe it. And we even believe when we do not see, we bless God. We thank God for another day. We thank God for all of you, all of you who are on YouTube right now and you who are on Facebook right now, we thank you so very much. It really, really is a blessing to be with you, to know that once we are on at midday, you're here. We thank God for the fact that you come because you believe in our ministry, because you see meat here, you see sustenance here. And when you come and you receive, you know that you have something to take you for the rest of the week. You too have experienced the miracles of God working through our man of God and through our ministers. 
Yes. And so we thank God for all he has done through the ministers at Wafif, both in Wafif, Jamaica and at Wafif, Fort Lauderdale. We bless God for our man and woman of God who are exemplary leaders. I'm talking about Apostle Courtney McLean and Reverend Nadine McLean. For all our leaders, we bless God for them. For all our members, we bless God for them. For our partners, you who partner with us, maybe you belong to another church, but what we say resonates with you and you want to partner with us because you see food. Yeah, you see God working, and so you are willing to partner with us. We bless God for you. We thank you so much for that. And if it is that you do not have a church home, then may I suggest Wafif? If you are in Florida, if you're in Miami, some people have driven a mile, a whole five miles just to come to celebrate at Wafif Fort Lauderdale. And persons have come from far and wide too to be with us at Wafif, Jamaica. So if it is that you do not have a church home, then Wafif, welcome to Wafif. Wafif is your church home. And if you are at another ministry and you feel that you get food at our ministry, and if you feel that the Lord is calling you to Wafif, then make the move. Make the move, yes? With, 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 with respect, you know? You reach out to your persons and you say, well, you know, can you release me, please, because, and you give your reason. So if it is that you feel God is calling you to our ministry, then we welcome you, yeah? We welcome you, but don't move if it isn't the Lord who is telling you to make that move. So we just bless God for you and I'm going to be sharing what God has laid on my heart today. And it's just a spring off from what Apostle said last night at the fifth anniversary. And you, if you are, if you have been uh, following, maybe if you have been there in person, or if you have been following the fifth anniversary celebration of Wafif Fort Lauderdale, then just say it. Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. If you were there in person, I know I saw Lady Gillian, she just ran and she embraced me. She says, finally, I meet you in person. And I was so happy to see Bishop in person. <laughs> so we have persons who uh, came from far just to celebrate and it really is a pleasure to celebrate. So if you were there, just say, I was there. But today, I'm just talking about being Christian, being Christian. Now, I say I'm Christian. You might say you're Christian, but I'm going to read just the same scripture passage that uh, Apostle read last night, and I'm going to use what he said to tell you how I see myself as a result of that. So I am Christian. Let me see all of you say that. <laughs> Whether or not you think you are, I want you to write that because after today, I know you're going to come up with your own acrostic acronym to, to tell why you think you are or what it is now that you need to prove that you are Christian. So let me see the, the, the text going up. I am Christian. Come on. I am Christian. Or maybe I should say, are you Christian? But I am Christian. Yes, Kareen James, I'm seeing it. Yes, Mona Lisa Henry, I am seeing it. I am Christian. Yes, Kareen, I am seeing it too. Yes, Nikisha Gray, yay. Facebook, I am seeing it. I am seeing it. I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it. All right. Marcia Deans, you are on you were online for Waffle Fort Lauderdale. Great. Well, if you couldn't be in the place at the time and you were online, that is good enough for me. God bless you. So I am Christian. Yes, Bridget Nelson on YouTube. I'm seeing you. I am Christian. I'm seeing you. I'm seeing you. I'm seeing you. All right. So last night's scripture passage was taken from Jeremiah chapter 18, verses 1 to 5. Get your Bibles, you know, while I'm on, every time I'm on, I've always told you, once you look and you see Sister Thelma on, get your Bible, get your notebook and your pen as well, because there would be something for you to learn, right? Never go in the presence of teaching, whether it is here on our, our, our live devotion or our midday devotion, if you go to a webinar, if you go to a workshop, if you go to a conference, once you are going in the presence of being taught by someone, never go empty-handed take your notepad with you take your pen with you because and if it's a spiritual event take your bibles with you because it says to the host and it says to you also i am going to to, to be filled 
I am going to learn. There must be one thing that I can learn. And I'm going, I've paid my money and I'm going to receive and I'm going to walk away with it and I'm going to put it to use. I'm going to apply it to my life. And I must see a shift. I must see a turnaround in my life. Like the, the theme last night, the theme for the fifth anniversary celebration is rebuilding. Yeah, rebuild your life, reshape your life, remold your life. Change, a shift must come into your life. So the scripture, Jeremiah 18, 1 to 5, this is the word that came to Jeremiah from Jehovah. Rise up and go down to the house of the potter, and there I will cause you to hear my words. So I went down to the house of the potter, and he was working on the potter's wheels. But the vessel that the potter was making with the clay was spoiled in his hand. So the potter reworked it into another vessel just as he saw fit. The word of the Lord. Now, what stood out to me is verse, what, verse one, where Apostle says that the Lord speaks to us in different ways because he could have said to Jeremiah right there where he was, whatever it was that he wanted to say to him, but he said, go down to the potter's house. And when you get there, I'll give you a message. God speaks to us through different situations, different circumstances at different places. And he speaks to us through situations as well. And when he said that, immediately my mind went to my aunt. So I'm not in, in, in Jamaica. And she it is, whenever I'm here, I stay with her and she takes me places, right? So we had a plan for her to take me somewhere in the evening. And then things change. She, she settled at that, okay? Nothing for morning, in evening. I have some stuff to do in the morning. Uh, evening, I'm going to be offering my service, yeah, to my niece. So we settled at that. And then later on, I said to her, uh, plans have changed. I need you for the morning. Now she began quarreling and she said, we settled on something. Now, I would not take that for an answer. I said, okay, so things have changed and I need your service. I need you to take me by 7.30 and I'm demanding that of her. And she is saying, but it can't work like that. Now, she, the type of person she is, she would take me, but she, she just had to let me know that things don't work like that. Now, as far as I was concerned, okay, fine, I know, I had told you X, but now it's Y, work with the Y. <laughs> And she fussed, and she fussed, and she fussed. And then I sat and I reflected for a bit. And then the spirit said to me, she said to me, you're inconsiderate. I never thought so. I thought that, okay, I'm telling you that things have changed. Work with the plan. But when she said I'm inconsiderate, I never thought anything of it at the time. But after I sat just before, you know, a couple of hours before getting ready, and the spirit said to me, she is right. She is right. The fact is, you are not the source of the change of the time. But the fact is, the time was changed. And she had settled on something else that she had told you, that, that, that I had told her. And so when I'm making this demand of her, it really was not fair. It was not considerate. And so I had to take my little self go downstairs to her, say to her auntie, I am sorry, I really was inconsiderate. And then the spirit said to me, but, but, but you're Christian, you're Christian. And that kind of behavior, placing the demand after everything was settled, that really wasn't Christian at all. And then I started saying, okay, I'm Christian, so what does that mean? What does that mean? And you know something, right away, I came up with an acrostic for me personally. And what I want you to do, get your pen and your paper and work with me now. This is, this is God's stuff here. Right away, because she con, um, accused me of being inconsiderate. And after thinking about it, I realized, yes, she was 
being truthful. I was being inconsiderate, irrespective of the situation. I was making a demand on her. It was not fair to her. And although she was going to do it, the fact is she was being honest. I was operating in an inconsiderate way. And so if I say, if I'm Christian, that C, a Christian is supposed to be considerate. Yes, a Christian is supposed to be considerate. And if you look at First Corinthians, work with me now. Right away, it sent me into the word of God. At what if we're Bible believing Christians, we stand on the word of God. And if what we're doing, if the word, if the word does not back it up, if the word doesn't complement it, then it does not make sense. Might as well we go and we deal with the humanism and the deism and the hedonism and all of those worldviews. But if we say we're Christian, then we have to check the Bible to see that what we're saying and what we're doing are the correct thing. So 1 Corinthians 10 verse 24 says, let no one seek his own good, but the good of his neighbor. I have to be considerate. I can't be self-centered. I can't think of just me. I have to think of the other person as well even if it hurts me. But if I say I'm Christian, then I'm going to have to ensure that I'm not, what I'm doing and what I'm thinking and what I'm saying and how I'm doing it doesn't only benefit me, but also the other person, or that I don't seem selfish, I don't come across as selfish. As I've had to admit to my auntie, I was being selfish in that regard. I was just thinking of what pleased me in spite of how she felt, in spite of the situation. So Christian, the C in Christian for me is also being considerate. They can think of anything else, but also being considerate. First Corinthians 10, 24, let no one seek his own good, but good of his neighbor. So it's in addition to your own good. And then the H for me, the H, we talk about holy, yeah? Holy. And I know many Christians, many people don't think of themselves as holy because that is for Christ. Only he is holy. Well, Second uh, Corinthians 7 verse 1, 2 Corinthians 7 verse 1 says, but just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do, for it is written, be ye holy because I am holy. A Christian, someone who professes to be Christian is expected to be holy. And there is nothing about it saying, I'm not Christ. He expect me to be holy, I'm not Christ. I've heard people say that. I'm not Jesus. I've heard people say that. But then it was Jesus himself. God said it in the Old Testament. And it was referred to again in the New Testament. Be ye holy. This is 2 Corinthians 7, 1 now. It was written and it's expected of us if we profess to be Christians to also be holy. All right. C-H-R. Now my R, righteous. They work together. Righteousness, holiness righteous and it took me to proverbs 21 verse 3 listen everything that you think about or you do in life check to see if there's scriptural reference for it if the bible doesn't back it up then forget about it if the bible doesn't back it up forget about it yeah so for my r and i want you also i want you also marcia chatry and Anne marie poiser and julia thomas all of you who are on facebook dion henry Stevie Solo, Christo Clark, Chambers, <laughs> Jessica Tanya, Barbara Atkinson, you who are on Facebook, and of course, you who are on YouTube. Ashley, hey, good to see you, Ashley. Ashley says, I am Christian. Jacqueline Martin, I'm Christian. So Sonia Dillon, yes. Lorraine Anderson, yes. Annette Hall, Jennifer Jackson, Lydia Mundell, Misha Powell, Sharon Edwards, yes. All of my friends on Facebook and on YouTube, work with me, get your pen and paper. And in addition to what I'm saying, come up with your own acrostic. If you are Christian, if you're not, you're going to be today, you're going to start your journey today. You have to start that process today. And if you need somebody to help you to walk through this, then somebody at Wafik will when you reach out. But come up with your own acrostic and then you live by it. So for me, the, the, the R, righteous, I went to Proverbs 21 verse 3, to do righteousness and justice 
is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. To do righteousness and justice. Now, he loves the sacrifice as well. He wants you to be sacrificial, and I'll come to that later on. But also important to God is your righteousness and justice, the righteous living, yeah? And, and, and offering justice to people, being fair and just in your disposition, in your arguments, in the things you do and say, righteousness. God appreciates that so much. And if you are Christian, then a righteous life is expected of you. So for me, my R, C-H-R, Christian, righteousness. Then the I, I went to Titus. For my I, influential. A Christian is supposed to be influential. When I come here and I say, listen, God loves you. And this is what God wants you to do. Yeah, and, and, and I live that way. And you see my life being what I say. You see me doing what I say as Christian. You're not supposed to see me doing some things. And you say, and look at her and when she finishes, she says she's a Christian. Because the people who are not Christians and who are stubborn and decide that they're not ready as yet at the same time, even the atheist, that person will say to you and look at her, and she says she is Christian. They know exactly how a Christian should behave. They know how somebody who uh, professes to be a follower, a follower of Christ should behave. So even although they are not followers, they know how a follower should behave. So be careful. So you are influencing others by virtue of what you say, how you say it, what you do, how you do it the life you live that becomes the influence and i went to titus chapter 2 verse 7 show yourself in all respects to be a model of good works and in your teaching show integrity and dignity and then first timothy chapter 4 verse 12 says to me let no one despise you for your youth no youthfulness or Adult, it doesn't matter. Let no one despise you. But listen, set the behavior, set the believers an example in your speech, in your conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. Is the Bible saying that, not me? We're standing on the biblical principles here. So when you set your, the believers see you behaving a certain way in your speech, in your conduct, in love, in faith, in purity, you are now being an influence to those who are watching. And even if they don't follow you, the fact is you have to maintain your stance. Somebody will follow. You are going to be an influence to someone. Your life, your lifestyle should influence others yeah so c-h-r-i mm. and then my s it says sacrificial there's no way you can profess to be a christian and not be a sacrificial person no way yeah christians offer sacrifices christians do things that hurt when they are doing it for the lord your very tithe, the very seeds that you sow, the help that you give others. Sometimes you don't have it, but because you believe on the Lord and you want a big withdrawal because of the deposits that you have been making in terms of your spiritual life and you're anticipating, you expect a huge withdrawal. You make the sacrifice and you put in some huge deposits in terms of your prayer, in terms of your fasting, in terms of your tithing, in terms of your seed, in terms of your worship. Sometimes you don't feel like it, but it has nothing to do with your feeling. It's something that you just have to do because God is God and God has laid out some principles and he expects certain things from you. And whether or not you feel like it, you just have to do it. Why? Because he is God. And, and that is what is expected. You were created to give God glory. Isaiah 43, 7, you were created to give God glory. And so certain behaviors are expected of you, even if you don't feel like it. So sacrificial, Hebrews 13, 15, and it says, through him, 
let us continue to offer up a sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. So even when you don't feel like praising him, you better praise him. You want that big withdrawal? You better praise him. You want that big miracle? You better praise him. You want that turn around in your, in your, your sad and sorrowful and bad situation? You are better praise him. It is when we're in dire need that we turn up the praises. Yeah, yeah. And your praise, when you don't even feel like doing it, that becomes a sacrifice and he loves that. Also in Romans 12 verse 1, Present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Some persons who are accustomed to a particular lifestyle, I've heard some ladies say it's her body, she can do what she wants with it. My, 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 my. And so she sleeps around. And so she does crazy things and freaky things with her body. No. Oh. If you are struggling against that and you really, if, 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 you, if you start saying, oh, I, I want to change this lifestyle, it is the good, the good that I want to do, I don't do it. It's the bad that I don't want to do that I do. So you need help and you find that you're in conflict with your body and your spirit. But when you put that body under subjection and you call in your troops and you say, listen, help me pray, pray, pray. And when you pray, God will answer once he sees it's coming from a genuine heart. That also becomes a sacrifice because you are praying against something that you seem powerless to. Your body seems to be, and, and, and what you're accustomed to doing over the years, it seems to be fighting you and fighting you, and many times you will yield to it. But if you keep letting God know you really want to stop and he sees the effort and the, the sacrifices, the little bits of sacrifice that you're making, he will come through for you. So sacrifice, for me, sacrificial, you can't say you're a Christian and you don't offer sacrifices, yes? All right, so where are we now? C-H-R-I-S-T, for me. Listen, this is my acrostic. What is yours? Work with me on this, man, and make sure that whatever you come up with, you have the, 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 the biblical, you have the scripture to back it up, all right? For me, the T, truthful, truthful. A Christian, if I profess to be Christian, then I have to be a truthful person. And where did I go for that? For that, I went to Colossians chapter 3, verse 9. It says, lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. Do not lie one to another. Because you put off the old man. The old man was an habitual liar. And lying goes with stealing. The old man was a thief. You know, you know, it's interesting that some people see stealing as when you make that big haul. <laughs> you make that big haul. And they don't see stealing as even copying from somebody's work, somebody who has studied and you're doing a test and you copy from somebody else's book or you might steal somebody else's work and you copy it and you present it as your work. That is stealing. Yeah, it's stealing from the intellect of somebody else, it's stealing somebody's intelligence and, and pretending as if it's yours. So you don't have to be doing any big haul, long haul for that to be stealing. And some persons, habitual liars, some people lie to look big. Some people tell lies when they know it isn't so, but because they want to be a part of the crowd. Yeah, so lie not. And of course, going back to Proverbs 6, 16 to 19, remember that? The things that God hates, six things God hates. No, seven that are abominable to him. And one of them is lying tongue. So if you profess to be Christian, then you have to be a truthful person. Right, Kareem? Right, Stevie? Yes, 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 yes. So just, just go ahead and make your own acrostic. Hey, Charlotte Ellis, how are you doing? Good to see you. Roxanne Westfield, yeah, yeah. So truthful, if you are professing to be Christian, then you have to be truthful in everything that you do. Whether or not it will embarrass you if you tell the truth, it doesn't matter. Once you do that, you will feel good after that because you are doing it 
for Christ, you're doing it because of who you profess to be. If you profess to be a follower of Christ, then you have to be a truthful person. You have to be an honest person. So work on that, yeah? So truth, and then that's my T, and then my I now, my I, what did I do for my I now? For my I, I have to be an inspirational person. When people are with me, they're supposed to be inspired. Right now, I'm hoping that I'm inspiring you to do what it is that I'm encouraging you to do. Christians are supposed to be inspirational persons, yeah? You speak life into persons. You inspire them to do. When I do my coaching and mentoring business, I'm inspiring people. And I've seen where people have received the inspiration. I've inspired them. I've motivated them to move on. People have written books. People have started business. People have gone back to school, yeah? People have given birth to their ministries as a result of being coached and mentored by me, being inspired by what it is that I've encouraged them to do and how to do it. The clarity through God that I have offered them when they're not seeing their way, when everything is muddled up here and they don't know what to do. They know what they want to do, but they have not got a clear path, a clear way in which to do it. And they'll come to me and I offer that service. Oh, they're inspired and they move on. They're motivated and they move on. So for my inspiration, being a Christian, the I, it took me to Romans 8, 28. That's my favorite scripture passage shared by myself and my daughter. All things work together for good to those who love the Lord, to those who are the called according to his purpose. So when somebody has something really, really bad happen to them and they come to me and they really are overwhelmed, I have to be the first to say, come on, let's look at this bad and see what we can get out of it. And that changes the person's disposition completely. And then the person begin, along with me, I'm showing, listen, you know, if this didn't happen, this wouldn't happen. Or, or just wait on God, speak to God and see what it is, what message it is that he wants you to receive from it. Be inspirational. Say something to them that will help. Matthew 19, 26, with God, all things are possible. You, you have a dream and people are saying to you, oh, but that's too big. I will step in and say, listen, don't follow those friends who are trying to crush or to kill your dreams. Do you believe in God? Yes. God is a God of the impossible. I remember when Jesus said, is anything impossible with God? And I, I was just envisioning Jesus saying it with attitude. I mean, do you know who you're talking to? I'm Jesus here. Is there anything impossible? You know, that's the attitude. So I would say to them, listen, no matter how difficult it seems, you can make it. It can work for you. There's nothing impossible with God. Nothing. You have the power in your mouth. You can speak it into being. God, it is who have given you the power to create wealth. And so you work on it. You work, you get your little money, you put this together and yeah, just inspire the person to do things that he or she didn't even expect could be done. And then Isaiah 41, 10, I love to say that to people. Listen, fear not, God says, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I'll be with you. I'll help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. That powerful right hand of God, he holds you up in the greatest of need that you have in the most difficult of circumstances the same god who says when you go through the water you will not drown i'll be with you the same god who says when you pass through the fire it will not burn you you will not smell of smoke it will not even singe you hey the same god who says that and i'll say that to persons and they come around they'll start to believe i'll pray and inspire that person to see things differently I am Christian. I am Christian. So I have to, I am supposed to inspire people. I'm supposed to say to them, not that route. Check, try this route. And I'll support that with biblical words, with the scripture. So a Christian is supposed to be inspirational. And A, affectionate. 
Now, everybody knows what affectionate means, and there are so many scripture passages that would support that. But I went for Ephesians chapter 4, verses 31 and 32, and it says, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you affectionate a christian is supposed to be affectionate no time for malice and tearing down and pulling down and being envious and jealous and all of that no time for that but time to be kind to one another tender-hearted towards each other forgiving one another and that is a sore topic forgiving i will never forgive that person I, the way she hurt me the way he hurt me never well, Christ didn't do anything with what they did for him. And he went all the way just to prove to you that you can also forgive. How many times must I say that? Yeah, he went all the way and he said, Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. Here was an innocent man. Father, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. And if he did that, he was setting an example so that you too could learn to forgive others. I am Christian. I am supposed to be forgiving. I am Christian. If I profess to be Christian, then I have to be forgiving. And then, of course, um, I have supposed to be. Uh, I am supposed to be affectionate. That's my A. And the last one now, the N. Now I'm going to leave you. I came up with noble. I came up with nimble, I came up with neighborly, but I think I am leaning towards neighborly. Noble means good, virtuous, upright, honorable. A Christian is supposed to be all those things. Nimble, quick thinking, alert, clever, intelligent. So when an atheist comes to you and say, how come you believe in God? God doesn't exist. You're quick thinking and you'll know exactly what to say. You're intelligent. You study your word and you'll know to knock back at that person with a word from God. Quick thinking, alert, clever. Hmm? That's nimble. And then there's neighborly, helpful, friendly, kind, warm-hearted. A Christian is supposed to be that, just like affectionate. And so I'm leading towards neighborly, but then the choice is yours. Choose anything. So what am I saying to you? God reaches out to us in different situations. Like I explained to you at the beginning about my aunt. He shows up and he speaks to you. Now, if you're not Christian, there is no way that you are going to have the second thought. What you would do is you would maintain that, listen, things, the plans have changed, so just work with the changed plans. That would be the stance that you would take. That's the stance that I took. But then, being Christian, the Spirit spoke to me and nudged me. You know what she's saying is correct? You're self-centered. Granted, time, the, the, the thing has changed, but don't just expect her to just get up and move like that because things have changed and she should understand. You have to be considerate of the fact that, yeah, it, it, it's going to affect her because she had changed her plans. So the fact that it says, if I'm Christian, I'm supposed to be considerate, it got me thinking, so what does this Christianity, Christianity, Christian thing mean for me? And I came up with that acrostic. So. I'll share it with you again. C, considerate. H, holy. R, righteous. I, influential. S, sacrificial. T, truthful. I, inspirational. A, affectionate. N, neighborly. What are yours? Before I go, let me quickly just find out. What are yours? What's your acrostic for Christian? What's your, what's your C? What's your H? What's your R-I-S-T-I-A-N? Can anybody just share quickly, quickly with me? Thank you so much again, YouTube, for showing up. Thank you so much again, uh, Facebook, for showing up. Thank you, Monique Reed.
Can anybody? I'll go with neighborly as well. All right. Cheryl Simpson says, like me, I'm leaning towards neighborly. She says she'll go with neighborly as well. And of course, I shared with you the scripture passages that I used to support that. Are you Christian? Are you a child of God? Are you willing to go that extra mile? Are you willing to walk that walk with Jesus? It's not easy. Easier for the camel to go through the eye of a needle? It's not easy. It's rough. But you think beyond this life. Where will you spend eternity? Yeah? Are you wanting to hear, welcome into my kingdom? Or are you prepared to hear, depart from me, I don't know you. I don't think you want the latter. But what it is that you have to do to hear the former, to hear Jesus saying, welcome, come, come. It's a lot of work that you have to do. It's a lot of work that you have to do. If you are a follower of Christ, you are Christian, you are a believer, you are a disciple, and it takes a lot. It takes a lot. Are you willing? Are you willing? to go all the way? Are you willing to go that extra mile? Are you willing to go beyond just your pleasure? Just what you think is right? Are you willing to go deep into the word? Hmm? Because many times we think that my life is okay. I'm not any old thief. I'm not cheating. I'm not jumping up and down in rum bars. I'm not going to parties every night and, and I'm so tired and I'm a nervous wreck. I can't even perform on the job. I'm not doing all of that. So I'm okay. But remember, it's not just you doing what you think. What does the word say? Does the word of God say it's okay to be just okay, just to be mediocre, just to be average in the kingdom? No. So if you really want to go all the way, if you recognize that what you're doing is still not a sold out experience with Christ, if what you're doing is still not a total surrender to Christ, then it's time for you to make that decision. Tomorrow is promised to no one. You can't be lukewarm. Yeah, now is not the time to be lukewarm. Too much is happening around. Can't you see? Wars and rumors of wars, changes, death, all of that. You can't afford to be lukewarm. It's time for you to sh sh roll up your sleeves and sh work. This weekend, Waffle Fort Lauderdale is celebrating five years. We bless God for that. So many churches have died in Florida. But Waffle Fort Lauderdale still stands. We bless God for that. And of course, this weekend, we're going to be having uh, evangelist Carlos Licona coming to Waffle, Jamaica, along with his team. And for the entire weekend, the Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we're going to be having, we're going to be going into the plazas. We're going to be going uh, on the streets, evangelizing, winning souls for the Lord. And we're going to be having our miracle and healing crusade on Sunday evening at six o'clock. And we're having the two services, seven and 10. Our crusade is on, revival is on, be a part of it register those of you who are walking fights register and go on the road be there be there and work in that vineyard souls must be one for the lord and those of you who want healing and deliverance yeah you go there sunday evening six o'clock be a part of that service go expecting something to happen and it will happen Mm? Until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive and your joy will be complete. That's James 1.22. Ask. Ask. And believe with all your heart that you will receive it. Mm? So are you willing to make that move? Are you willing to be sold out for Christ? Say after me, Lord, I am a sinner. I recognize that I'm far from you. I want to be a part of your family. Welcome me into your family, Lord Jesus. Cover me under your blood. Wash me clean of my sins. I want to be a part of your family. Forgive me of all my sins. I totally surrender to you. And I do so 
in the name of Jesus Christ, your son. Amen. I want to see those claps going up for those persons who just said that. Now, if you said that and you truly mean it, then you are a part of the family of God. Welcome to the family of God. Please write to us, Wafif online members at gmail.com or Wafif worship at gmail.com. Someone will reach out to you to help you to start this process. Don't be afraid. Nothing is out there in the world. I'm sure you have tried it and you have proven it. Nothing. Become a part of the family of God. And let us go and reap the rewards, reap souls to populate the kingdom of God. All right. All right. So Carol Hamilton here says integrity, transparent and alignment. Is that for your I and your T and your A? Cool. Cool. All right. Good. Thank you so much. Yeah, congratulations. Yeah, I'm seeing all of it. <laughs> so Facebook and YouTube, thank you so much for being with us again today. Today, Monday, the 23rd of May. It really has been a blessing. Yeah, I'm seeing the hearts. Yeah, I'm seeing the hearts. Go ahead, give those hearts. I didn't tell you to do that. Go ahead, I forgot. Just give those hearts and those thumbs up and go ahead and share. Go ahead and share this so that others will see it Others will, you know, do what it says, and we're all part of, of the family of God. I am Christian. Are you? So when we're off, just go ahead, come up with your own acrostic and live by them. Come up with your own acrostic and live by them. What is the scripture verse for neighborly? All right. That's uh thank you for reassurance. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you all right thank you so much guys thank you so much thanks to uh apostle courtney mclean reverend nadine mclean thanks to to deaconess aisha james who's there in the background causing you to see all of this pretty me and pretty you <laughs> thank you deaconess aisha and so next time yes you're, you're welcome andrea palmer thank you so much you are you are welcome i bless the lord for all of you lord just watch over your people lord watch over those who took the time to just come on to to share and to receive bless them in a special way those who have just made the decision to go all the way with you to be sold out for uh, 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 for you to to totally surrender to you receive them almighty god and when the enemy comes in like a flood to to wipe away the decision that they have made i pray that you live Lift up a standard against this enemy and help to set your people on the right path. Provide the right persons in their corner to help them to start this process. Bless them and cover them under your blood. The fact that they have come on, I know the devil has plans to do all kinds of things because we're not ignorant of the devil's devices, but we break the plans of the enemy right now against your people. And we ask for a special blessing on those who have come on YouTube, those who have come on Facebook, bless them in a special way. Keep them safe from accidents and incidents. Those who are at home right now, I cover their houses under your blood. I put the blood around the four corners, the four sides of their yards. Those who are at work right now, I protect them from that cantankerous uh, co-worker and, and, and that boss that is demanding. I pray peace in the families. I pray, pray peace in the communities and in the neighborhood peace be with them i wipe away conflict from them i break depression and panic attack and anxiety attack and all the situations that prevent them from being closer to you bless them now bless them almighty god bless them free them make haste to help them in their troubles right now in the mighty name of jesus christ of nazareth Amen, 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 and amen. God bless you. Love and appreciate you. See you next time. God bless you.